So basically, the uh, one, one of the trials that, uh, we, that that was first done was the uh, eye optical study, which is a purely Indian trial on the use of uh, uh, of, of real time optical OCT and angio co-registration in decision making during a coronary angioplasty, and it was a multi center prospective study. Now. Um, the, it was the aim of the study was basically to determine the impact of real-time OCT and uh, co-registration with angiography on physician decision in, uh, uh, may, may, uh, while doing a PCI optimization in South Asian countries. The, uh, basically, there were two primary objectives, one to assess the, pre the use in pre-PCI and the second in, in post-PCI situations, and the use uh, and, and the use of, angio, of, of OCT and, and, uh, and angio co-registration, uh, whether it made a difference to the decision-making purely based on angiography, both pre-PCI and post-PCI. There were secondary, certain secondary outcomes in terms of the uh, uh, angiographic success and the procedural success, MACE at six months and one year, which are still being uh, st studied, and certain cat lab metrics in terms of how much extra time you took and how much extra volumes you used in terms of uh, you know, doing the test. If you look at the study flow, if we, did, we did an angio first, did a planned a strategy, did an OCT, planned a strategy, did an ACR, planned a strategy, and subsequently did the, uh, the, the PCI. So we looked at any change in the strategies uh, in, in, in both these uh, situations using an OCT and, and an ACR. Uh, once we did the angioplasty, we had a, a look at whether pure OCT made a change in the strategy to the finalization of the, te of the, of the uh, angioplasty and whether ACR made a difference to the strategy change. If you look at the pre-PCI strategy changes, um, in, in terms of an overall strategy change to OCT in, uh, 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 in, uh, from angiography to OCT, there was a significant amount of change in the strategy, almost 76%. Uh, adding ACR to that didn't make much of a difference, but it, yes, it did add an, a 22% uh, overall change in the strategy in, in, the, in these patients. Post-angioplasty, the uh, st overall strategy change was about 30%. That means if you had purely based on angiography versus going onto an, on, onto an OCT and, uh, lo lo and looking at it, the change in the strategy was about 30%. So we are the um, addition of an ACR uh, uh, but when you added an ACR to the OCT, there was no significant change in the overall strategy. If you look at the overall strategy, it was about 86% pre-procedure versus 30% post-procedure, an overall change of about 90% in the strategy, in, in the change in strategy using an OCT as compared to just pure angiographic guided, uh, ang guided procedures. Um, Therefore, the conclusion of the study was that uh, OCT plus ACR changed the angiographic-based decision in almost 90% of all lesions, pre-procedural in about 76% of lesions, additional angio registration added another 22%, and post-procedural change in OCT was about 30% of the patients. Uh, the basic algorithm of, the, of, of OCT has been the MLD max algorithm, and that has been to optimize it pre-angioplasty and post-angioplasty based upon morphology, length, diameter, and post-OCI in terms of medial dissection, apposition, and, uh, and uh, expansion. This basically aims to reduce the time and steps for decision making and optimize and, and get an optimal result. If you look at the morphology, it gives you the morphology of the, of, of, of the uh, 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 plaque. It gives you the length of the plaque accurately. And it gives you a diameter which is based upon whether you have a good EEL to EEL or you have a... Um, uh, only the intimal uh, readings, wherein you can size the stent depending upon whether the reading is an EL to EL or whether it is intima to intima. The, al the, the ML MLD max algorithm uh, helps in, in, in optimizing results. A couple of cases that show us is this was a, a, a lady who came, came to us with uh, blackout episodes uh, after an uh, having angina and then blackout episodes with those in walking for two to three minutes. Uh, we did, this is the lesions on an angiography, did an FFR to both the lesions, both the lesions FFR was a positive. She had a stress test which was positive in the intralateral leads, uh, and subsequently we decided to treat these lesions uh, and, uh, with, with an angioplasty. So we did an OCT run from the uh, 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 circumflex into the uh, uh, left main. Uh, these are the lesions. Uh, you can see the, the luminal area in the, uh, in the, in the, in the closest part, in, in the smallest part was about 1.18 millimeters. Uh, and subsequently, a significant number of calcium also visible in, with, within these lesion segments. The left main, the ostium of the, uh, the circumflex is relatively clean. The left main was diseased, but there was no significant plaques or, or narrowings within the left main. Um, this uh, basically helped us in terms of the uh, proximal and the reference diameters. 
proximally and at the distal end, the length of the lesion in terms of the, uh, the, the exact length that we require to deploy the stent. And the, as far as the plug morphology is concerned, the decision to use additional scoring balloons or cutting balloons. So we decided to debulk with using a cutting and scoring balloon. Um, subsequently, went in with a um, OCD for the LAD also, and then predilated both the LAD and circumflex. And we used a V stenting technique because the left main was roomy. Um, and uh, post, uh, we did not extend the stent into the left main. It was just at the ostium of the um, LAD and the circumflex. And this was the OCT, which was post-procedural. Uh, in terms of um, the uh, this thing, you also get a, um, a, a three-dimensional view. You get a bifurcation angle, which tells you the ostia of both the vessels, uh, which sees that you can see that it's relatively clear of any major stents or any, any, any major encroachments, good luminal areas as far as the um, uh, thing is concerned, a minimal under-expansion of the proximal edge of the circumflex stent, which is then post-dilated using a 3.5 balloon till we got a, uh, an adequate luminal uh, area within it. So this is the end result, the final result of the procedure. Um, this is another gentleman who came up after a post-exercise, uh, uh, otherwise healthy, fit gentleman who came with an anterior wall MI uh, post, uh, while, while, while doing an exercise and subsequently took him for an angiogram. We were not sure whether we should treat this lesion or not, uh, whether we had a, uh, whether this is just a plaque erosion. Uh, did an OCT on this gentleman. We found that there was a plaque rupture uh, with a thin cap fibrous atheroma uh, across the lesion, and uh, this is this, this is the uh, the thickness of the of the thin cap there. Subsequently, look, he decided to use the MLD Max algorithm here also in terms of the length and the diameter. A large vessel, a four millimeter vessel, approximately, and a 3.5 distally. Um, so we used a four millimeter stent to, uh, to use a direct stenting here because there was no significant calcium, and it was a ruptured plaque with a uh, thin cap fibrous atheroma. So this helped us to size the stent, stent and, the, uh, and, and, and get, a, get an adequate result. Uh, in terms of the last, this is slot, the last patient who basically who's, who was an army major who actually came to us with an anterior wall MI. Uh, he didn't want to be uh, examined in, the, in, in Ladakh, so he went to Chandigarh, got, got himself admitted, then came to Bombay. Uh, incidentally, when we saw him, we found that he also had DVT and he had thrown a pulmonary emboli. Uh, and at that point of time, uh, we decided to leave him alone as far as the medical, uh, as far as the coronaries were concerned, uh, because we thought that he had a recanalized LAD. And we treated him for his pulmonary embolism, treated him for his DVT, and he, he went back, uh, he, he went back home. He was doing well for about a year when he came back in a year's time with, uh, with, with worsening of disease, with worsening of symptoms, and a little fall in the ejection fraction. Uh, anterior wall showed significant viability on, uh, on viability on cardiac MRI. Uh, and it showed that there was a progression of disease in the, uh, in, in the LAD. And uh, this is what we found when we took him up for an angiogram and an OCT. Uh, he had uh, a, a recanalized vessel, multiple septae. Um, and uh, this was, and basically, uh, this, this, uh, the, the OCT helped us to sort of delineate the, the morphology of the lesion. And the, of course, here we used the same algorithm again to sort of uh, decide what form of treatment to be done. And in terms of uh, the plaque morphology, use or using of a, of a scoring balloon, and in terms of uh, the, the luminal diameter, ended up with a 28 millimeter stent from the, uh, from the distal landing zone to the proximal landing zone and optimized it with a 3.25 millimeter balloon proximally. So, this was the end result, and we have once one or two, uh, one, one, we had one or two struts lying in the ostium of the uh, of the of the circumflex. So we're a little careful about the follow-ups in terms of this patient, with a regular follow-up every six months. So, uh, in terms of uh, what we need to uh, look at uh, when we use a uh, OCT for optimizing our treatments, is to look at the morphology, length, and the diameter, optimize the pre-PCI. Uh, and like, as, as Dr. Ashok Shet said, you, you, can't, you need to deploy a stent where, one, only once you have the vessel completely dilated. Otherwise, you always end up with some issues with the other. And the use of uh, OCT in terms of deciding cal cal calcific lesions can never be understated. So uh, the, the algorithm is easy to remember. Analysis of pre and post OCT, OCT runs are well structures, structured. And it helps to reduce the time in, uh, in, in, uh, in making a PCI strategy and a precise understanding of the implanted strength with areas to optimize, if any. Thank you very much.